We are back. Call down the ancient god of Huitzilopochtli and burn away those thigh highs, ladies and gentlemen. In this episode, we are going to get into some of the heaviest hitters this mod has to offer. This will be the second to last part of the series, and it is a doozy. We will be introducing lovely creatures that have so many hearts that they flow off the screen like tears down your face after you get one shot by most of them. From ones that bomb you to ones that stay permanently invisible. We have the displeasure of walking you through the end game forces of these parasites. I hope you brought protection against Call of the Thigh. Um, you mean Call of the Hive, right? No, no, seriously, I don't have anything about Call of the Thighs on record. So, so you must be joking, right? Wait, why are they dressed like that? Wait, 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 how many hearts does this thing have? Yeah, just call Dora. We need someone to figure out how many hearts this is. Now, we're starting off with this big jellyfish creature that looks like it has herpes. It flies up and down like a yo-yo at moderate speeds, all the while attempting to drop bombs on you. Now, besides the two main spawners, this is definitely one of the most dangerous creatures on the list. It's able to spawn mobs such as Vigilante, Marauder, and Sucker. And unlike the love of your wife, after that restraining order, this thing never runs out of power and it will keep running full force at you. It has yes damage and yes health. It's a lovely little spawner that spawns bombs and creatures that love nothing more than blow their load on you, which, fun fact, contains wild amounts of the wither effect. The only thing this balloon of guts fails in is mobility. It's nearly as fast as you, but that's snail speed by parasite standards. 240 hearts! Is that all? Yes! Wow, don't you love reskins? This here is the Haunter, almost an exact copy of another mob we'll be going over later, with the other one just being bigger and blacker than this. Besides the size of this thing being a two-story building, it also has Quick Step for some reason. Oh, and of course, don't forget about the adaptation ability on top of his massive health pool. That is, of course, if you didn't just give up and disable adaptation in the mod's config files. Oh, and please do let us know if you'd like us to show you how to disable that. Did we ever really explain Quick Step that much? Like, No, no, not, not really. Eh, we should do that at one point. Yeah, we should. Now we have this creature. It looks like a beetle that crawled through the drain when you forget to unclog it. This thing will scuttle around and spawn suckers near constantly. Along with that, this thing just spreads residue everywhere around it. Anywhere it walks. This beast literally digs through mountains. Only the thickest obsidian walls prevent this thing from coming after you. It may not have ludicrous adaptation, but this thing will typically, in a non-controlled environment, have a lot worse things than suckers around it when it spawns. Just think of the colony carrier as a mobile dispatcher applying regeneration 3, foster 2, and link 1 to all nearby allies. Now one amazing thing to mention is the fact that this creature actually has a weakness that isn't fire. It takes triple damage to its back bulb and then applies bleeding to it. On to the boggle. I absolutely hate this thing. Personally it's one of my least favorite parasites to deal with and combines nearly all of my least favorite attributes. That being a massive health pool, the ability to fly, a good ranged attack, and invisibility. And no, not that weak shit Mandicators have, and not the Halo active camo, but just literal invisibility. Where is it? Unless you set this thing on fire or damage it, it'll just phase out of reality whenever it feels like. Oh, and of course, this thing has nearly no cooldown on its invisibility. Whenever you damage it and leave it alone for a second, it'll just say, well, back to the void, I guess. This thing, upon killing and touching the ground, will destroy a very significant amount of blocks. On top of that, it will inflict some of our favorite status effects such as Wither Fucking 4 and Poison 2. So, if you're hunting, it's hunting you while you're playing grab ass with a creeper, there's no need to survey the area or look for threats because like a ICBM, when you antagonize America too much, you'll never see this coming. Now I know what you may be saying, oh, it looks like the boggle, but does it do anything different? Yes, it shoots acid. They have different names, but this is just the more aggressive version essentially. It can still go invisible and do everything the boggle can. However, it tends to shoot more, and it wants to stay invisible less often. 
for all the Dragon Ball GT fans out there that have had their brains turned to mush. One's Goku and the other one's him. Well, that's fair, except it can't stop time. It can't move that fast. It's not a purple alien. Probably can't beat Goku. Shut up, nerd! Now, the ancient Dreadnought is an unfinished creature. The parasites haven't gotten done gooping him together. He has a few ranged attacks, does a lot of damage, and has a lot of health. There's not anything special about him besides his ancient drop pods. Now there's really not much going on here. I think we can move on to the next beast. The cloven hooves of Satan on a parasite. Yeah, this is the bigger version of the haunter we were talking about. It is also unfinished, sadly. And just like the ancient dreadnought, there's really not much to say here at all. Not a single thing to add here. So I know we like to do this a lot, but I'd really like to do this at least one more time. I'm gonna play this scene for you right now. You've dipped, ducked, and weaved every parasite. You use mods with guns, nukes, and bombs, whatever you can to get past the parasites. You push your way all the way to the end portal and made it to the end to finally kill the ender dragon and get some sort of victory. You build a bridge over to the mainland and you realize something. There's two dragons. Now, it's not likely, but that's a possible thing that can happen. If anyone here has done research on it, I don't know. But there's this thing called spawn weight. Now, the spawn weight of a rabbit in the desert is, a, is four. Every time you see a rabbit in the desert, remember it has a spawn weight of four. Things like pigs have a spawn weight of ten. Basically, the higher the spawn weight, the more likely it is to spawn. The assimilated ender dragon has a spawn weight of two, meaning if the god of RNG is completely forsaken you, there can be three or more dragons. So compared to the normal ender dragon, this thing boasts an additional 30 hearts. Absolutely wild if you think about it for a second, and this thing does double the melee damage that the ender dragon does. On hard. Pair that alongside the fact that its breath weapon is almost always a one-hit kill. Oh, and don't worry, this thing can break blocks too, so if it does spawn in the end, it can slowly but surely mine through the end stone you're standing on. It also has dragon breath that has a lingering effect much like the ender dragon normally, but instead of doing baseline magic damage, which also does, it inflicts poison, called hive and viral. Wow, amazing! And the ranged attack can be performed in quick succession, so if he can dodge getting one shot, that attack will likely kill a nearby enderman and assimilate it. This will lead to all the others getting infected over time, and then it'll become the fun little shit show you saw in the first video. Now it does have a small weakness. You can destroy its wings by dealing enough damage to them to the point they'll simply just fall off, preventing it from flying. Also keep in mind that enough damage to the head will also decapitate it. Now, if you think deca decapitation kills it, well, you haven't been paying attention. You should go and rewatch some of our previous videos. Its head will fall off, grow tentacles, and then proceed to try to kill you. Don't worry though, in case you were scared, you can cut off both of its wings and its head, and if you didn't do enough damage to the body, it'll continue attacking you. So you'll just die from getting tag teamed by both the body and the head. Fuck yeah! Balance! The fuck is that? Here we go. Stage one Beckon. This stage is not really a serious threat, as it is of course the earliest stage in the Beckon's life. Though keep in mind, it can most certainly become a problem if you let it. It shoots out small balls that can spawn ruptures, and that's all it really has. It also spawns a small amount of residue around it on top of that. Now these bombs that spawn ruptures inflict stacking poison and viral, of course. But with taking four to five minutes to grow and having no real range capability, you can take it out real quickly with a bow or a gun. Yeah, all this puts it in the difficulty of around a small child sandcastle, kicking it over while the dad goes to find an AR-15. So while the stage one beckon is very easy to kill, you best be running away as soon as you're done with Alright, so if we're looking at these things like a family, the first stage was a baby, and this one would be the older sister. The main thing that this thing boasts compared to its smaller counterpart is the fact that it can spawn ruptors, assimilated mobs, and flying carriers. It can throw out four bombs at a time which also stack viral and poison. It boasts a slightly wider infection radius infesting eight blocks wide and six blocks deep. Other than that, only having 30 health, it's a threat, but not as big as a threat as a lot of other parasites in this mod. So this is the evolution of the stage 2 beckon. We are now on to stage 3. This is effectively the mother of the stages, boasting the ability to be spawned by a stage 4 beckon. The ability to spawn everything the previous ones could along with primitive mobs, heavy carriers, and most pure assimilated mobs. They also boast an infestation range of 16 blocks, once again doubling its predecessor. It can throw an additional two bombs, putting them up to six bombs, on top of the same effects with each bomb. Now, what kind of puts stage three as the mom of the group is the fact that it can spawn sentries in the kyphosis, which give it that extra defense that make it much harder to snipe them, and especially makes them harder to fight with melee weapons. Okay, now we're on to the father of all parasites here. This creature has full dominion over everything. It can spawn lower rank beckons nearby, it's capable of instantly evolving nearby parasites, and if all that isn't bad enough, it can spawn a node. 
Now, the name might not be that intimidating, but it is possibly, even more than viral, the most cancerous thing ever added into any mod I've ever seen for any game. So the node is going to be right next to a stage 4 beckon that has spawned smaller beckons that are infesting the entire area, and the node can spread the infested territory near infinitely, turning the region into a parasite biome. Some notes regarding this biome follow as, it's very foggy, you can't see more than 5 feet in front of your face, all of the strongest mobs in the game, excluding the assimilated ender dragon, will spawn frequently here, and all of the water is turned blood red. The only way to get rid of the parasite biome is by destroying the node, which I wish you the best of luck in doing. You'd have an easier time trying to get away with killing John Wick's dog while running over Vin Diesel's family and spitting in the face of Rambo than getting to that node. The best that the mod gives you is a compass that points you in the right direction. Other than that, it's up to you and whatever mods you bring to the table. It's like giving you a butterfly knife to fight a polar bear. Even with a purifier, it does not get rid of the fog as long as the node is there. If you manage to destroy the node, you best make sure that you kill the stage 4 beckon, otherwise it will just keep spawning new nodes infinitely. Though so keep in mind, there can only be one of these things at any given time. Though there is one small problem with killing the stage 4 beckon. Now, we haven't mentioned this because it dubiously mattered, but we're gonna tell you now, there's a damage cap. So if you want to kill this thing with a nuclear bomb or something along those lines, at least according to the mod's wiki, if the damage cap even works, if the parasite takes a million damage, it should not die from that hit. This is because no matter how much damage you deal to this creature, some of them will take up to a minimum of 15 hits to kill. This thing, the stage 4 beckon, has a weakness on top of it. It's ball sack. That thing will take triple damage. Oh, and I'd like to mention this last little bit before we go on to the intro and start working on part 5, which will be the final part by the way. We'll go over any mobs we haven't touched in this video, the evolution system, blah blah blah, and we'll wrap this all up. Now, I know for a fact that stage 4 beckon is harder to kill than the ender dragon, so tell me why the ender dragon drops 12k experience, which can take you from level 0 to level 68, but the stage 4 beckon only gives you fucking 220. Okay, on to the Dispatchers. These guys can only be spawned via Dispatcher Niduces. The Niduces can spawn on Phase 1 and onwards. If any parasite with the exception of incomplete forms and inborn parasites get 15 kills, they have a chance of placing a Dispatcher Nidus. Niduces will collect kill count points from nearby parasites, and once those points reach 40, it will attempt to spawn a Stage 1 Dispatcher. If there is already one nearby, it will simply give 120 evolution points to the bull. Stage 1 dispatchers can spawn up to 3 seizures. You can also store parasites for later. Any creatures disguised nearby it will immediately drop their disguise, and whenever it takes damage, it will drop 4 bombs each time that inflict viral and poison, our favorite little effects. We love them. Any parasites that are stored when they are released gain debar, link, and heightened senses. Other than all that, they're not really that hard to kill. Similar to Stage 1 Beckon, you can simply deal with it fairly easily with ranged weapons. Alright, so as long as the Parasite phase is high enough, after 5-6 to six minutes, a Stage 1 Dispatcher will grow into a Stage 2. It'll grow an additional head and gain new powers. This version can hold up to 5 Parasites in its rumbly tumbly and spawn up to five Caesars. And it can also evolve Buglin's Interrupters when they're stored. Also, when storing an incomplete form with enough points accumulated, it can turn it into a Heed. One of the biggest problems is the fact that every stored enemy now has Speed 1, Regeneration 2, D-Bar, and Heightened Senses for three minutes, along with Link for five minutes.
Okay, now if the parasite's phase is high enough, then stage 3 will be born, which will take anywhere between 6 to 12 minutes, and it will continue to gain more and more abilities. They can now hold up to seven parasites. They can now summon both Caesars and Sentries. Seven total, by the way, to defend themselves. They can now turn Ruptors into Manglers when stored. When stored, assimilated mobs will turn into primitive mobs, and any incomplete forms will turn into a crux. When stored, they will then gain Regeneration 3, Strength 3, D-Bar, and Heightened Senses 3 for five minutes, with Link 2 lasting an oddly specific Six minutes and 40 seconds. Well, at least according to the wiki, there is no growth time for these dispatchers. But they do apparently grow for stage three. But we currently don't know how long it takes. Now, not to be repetitive, but they can hold nine creatures, spawn nine sentries slash seizures, and their bombs do about 50 damage. So the three most important things to differentiate stage 4 are as follows. They now drop ancient drop pods, seemingly flinging parasitical debris from outer space towards your chrome dome. Secondly, and this is disabled by default, but they will one day generate colonies. They will gather around the dispatcher and provide bonuses such as armor, health, and knockback resistance. And and damage caps. Now just imagine a ruptor tanking rockets from your rocket launcher to the point that it takes three rockets to kill one ruptor. Lastly, all parasites that are stored become Frank Horrigan from Fallout 2. They get speed 3, regeneration 4, strength 4, absorption 4, d-bar and heightened senses 4 for oddly specific reasons that last for 6 minutes and 40 seconds. On top of that, link 3 for 8 minutes and 20 seconds. Now, just to put in mind here, Strength 4 means you're doing like an extra 80% damage at this point. Some of these parasites are doing something ridiculous like 80 hearts at that point. Add that with being 60% faster and having Regeneration 4, so every tick, the parasites are getting 6 hit points back. I hope you enjoyed our current round of testing. We hope that you subscribe and continue to follow us through this journey of the parasite activities. Um, I don't know where the other two have gone, um, nor where the test subjects have gone, but I'm sure they'll turn them eventually. See you later.